Lexi on Gears. Well, thank goodness for Peugeot South Africa and uh, Lucky. Lucky 208. He was uh, yesterday in the studio, uh, did lols with, uh, with Darren. Very, very cool. Because they managed to, number one, find <laughs> Dorothy Black. And they managed to pick her up and they managed to transport, transport her here without any incident. This is first time Dorothy Black and I know each other for a few years now. Mm -hmm. This is the first time ever that we are doing a face to breastuses interview and question. Can I talk now? Yes. Oh, I know. It's so exciting. There you are. It, it might be a little bit awkward, actually. It is a little bit awkward. I oh, might shit. have to. Sorry, I have to put this off. Okay. I will have to look at, I'll have to look at Corbus. Hi, Corbus. Because. Show me your breasts. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> She's lucky she didn't ask you to show you something else. <laughs> so listen, now hold on a yes. second. Before we get into our question, mm. um, what are you doing in Johannesburg? Um, I'm going to go sort out or look at all the sex stores that I've written about, go into them, go check them out. They don't yeah. know what I look like yet, so I'm going to go and give them a little oh. bit of a test, test oh. one. Going to the sex bar, obviously. Yes, you're going Saturday. I'm going on Saturday, yeah. We'll see you there. I'm playing at the Excess Music Fest. What time? I don't know. Sometime in the evening. Oh, okay. okay. I'm going to Everstar in the evening. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I'm so excited about no, that. I'm sure it's very, very good. Let me know how the um, confetti uh, machine works. Awesome, and the eight lasers. The eight lasers, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. And family and friends and. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad to see you. It's again. good to see you, yeah. to actually see you. Yes, I know. It's actually quite a lot of fun. Um, Dot, as always, mm -hmm. we do have a very interesting question. Yes. So, here and we it's go. That's a good one. This is a good one. Mm. It says Dear Dot, I've encountered a man who doesn't have the rampant, inexhaustible sex drive we've been led to believe men possess. Mm -hmm. This is a man who is not led by his genitals. I have found myself asking the question, how do you appeal to a man who is not driven by sex? Mm. He enjoys it in the moment, but he doesn't behave in a sexual way outside of the bedroom. I prefer not to be the aggressor. I really don't think that would appeal to him either. So I wait and wait for him to make his move. Hmm. I've pulled a number of sensuous tricks. Oh, well, you're reading this really well, Sash. Out, I know, because I, I... I know, I'm so impressed. I know, because I read, <laughs> I read a couple of the um, chapters of Fifty Shades on the show. Oh, well done. Yes. Um, I've pulled out a number of sensuous tricks out of my hat. And I've, uh, and I've had to become very creative. I know it's not just me. I know this is how he is with women in general. What? How do you appeal to a man who is passionate but isn't sexual? sexual. Um, I think the the fallacy that all men are highly, highly sexed is just that it's a fallacy. It's me very media driven. It's the same thing as women who are not as sexed as men are. You know, they're more homely. It's all just bullshit. Um, I think the trick is to. Do you realize that if you want to stay in this relationship, you both have to make compromises. And that compromise is, if, you, um, if you're not comfortable being the aggressor, well, you've got to learn to kind of um, explore that part of yourself, the part, the, the part of you that can actually initiate. And if he's going to want to stay in this relationship, he's going to have to... Um, he's uh, so many distractions here. <laughs> he's going to have to, um, to agree to actually compromise and to make an effort. And that's where it boils down to. And if you can't compromise, if you guys can't find a middle ground, it's but, not going to change. But hold on. It seems as though she wants a lot of sex and he's not up for it. She might just want, you know, there's no normal amount, of normal amount of sex. But if your sex drive, mismatched sex drives in relationships are very common. And the trick is that, you know, you find a, com you find a middle ground. You compromise a bit either way. You learn to do things that you wouldn't normally do. You not put out more, you, whatever the case may be is. But if you can't find that middle ground, it's not going to change. You're not suddenly, he's not suddenly going to wake up one day and be more sexually active. You're not suddenly going to wake up one day and be less sexually inclined. Um, you need to consider if this is a long-term relationship, if this is something that you can live with, if this is a lifestyle you can live with, if this is a, a way of relating that you can live with. If not, and there's no compromise and there's no talking about it, um, you might have to consider if this is a long-term thing for you. Mm, yeah, you see, I don't know, I don't know. Why? Because, uh, I mean, how does she, listen, she wants, she likes the guy. She clearly. likes the guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a very passionate guy. Yeah. But he isn't in, you know, he's, he's not there easily aroused, sure. clearly. Yeah. And she doesn't like playing the aggressor and she but thinks. But she says she has tried some sensuous tricks. Yeah. But I mean, maybe they're not sensuous enough. 
No, hey, it's not her fault. Of course it is. <laughs> of course it's no, you fault. can if she's if she's willing to initiate, then she needs to sit down and tell him that she needs him to initiate sometimes. And if he wants to commit, if he's committed to the relationship and he's committed to her, he's going what's to have to learn to try a little but bit. But what's wrong if he when he wants sex, she should obey? Who says that? Well, I'm just saying. How does that relate? Well, the, because she's saying she's pulled out a whole lot of tricks, become more creative, he's still not responding, but when he's in the moment, then he's there. I think what she means is when he's in the moment, or when she's initiated and he's in the moment, then he's there. But in order to get him there, it takes a bit of a, bit of a lubing up. Well, that's already a help. Yeah, but it's a very lot. But I think what she's saying is that she doesn't want to be the, the initiator all the time. There is nothing more depressing than being the person in the relationship that has to initiate all the time for sex. It as, makes you feel... As like I know with <laughs> you forever. <laughs> you know. Let's say with you and Darren. But, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it makes you feel rejected. It makes you feel unattractive. It makes you feel... There are a million very negative feelings that are attached to it. And okay. your partner has to be willing to compromise. So he's either got to... He's got to come to the party a bit. She's got to explore her aggressor side. He's got to explore his aggressor side. Um, and they've got to come to a compromise. And it's not going to change if that compromise is not reached. And okay. she needs to be honest. Has she spoken to him about this? I certainly hope so. I hope so as well. Okay. Well, that's that one out of the way. I've had a couple other ones that I've got here for you. The other ones? No, we're just yeah, I've, I've thought if, I'm, if you got to here, I might as well talk oh to God. you for a bit. Okay. Yeah. I, this is very, this is very um, I'm so used to staring at my laptop or a piece of paper. I know. And I now there are people walking in and there's sports on the and the telly. Pe and people have seen you. And now people have seen me. I know. Well, and Lucky's sitting there like laughing. <laughs> this is very intimidating. I don't know how you do this for a living. Yeah, well, you know, it's years and years. <laughs> years and years, years and years. years and years. Okay, listen to this. I am married guy. You're jumping this one on me. I am. I'm jumping this on you. I'm a married guy in my late 30s and my dad-in-law is in his late 50s. Yeah. Oh you God. know where this is going? <laughs> I have known him for many years before I met his daughter. Oh, uh, yeah. My problem is that over the last several years yeah. or so, we've somehow become extremely close on a personal level. Example being... Wait, him and the dad? Yes. <gasps> Listen to this. There is a oh. massive amount of physical contact. <gasps> Hand touching, scratching. Wow. I've massaged his back wow. and his shoulders many a time. And he's also let me see himself naked. He even let me feel his penis through his pants. <laughs> okay. Wait, wait. So is he married to the daughter? He's married to the daughter, but now him and the father... Have a little well, they're, they're eroticism going yeah. on there. Now he's saying, I don't know what to do. Well, is he attracted to this man? Well, clearly. doesn't say anything else. That's it. Wow, that is... That's quite a big one. That's a biggie. Has he... Well, I mean, if that... My first question, if this was my friend, I'd be like, well, have you and the father actually sat down and spoken about this? Because the, you know, the fantastical eroticism of kind of, you know, massaging on the sly or, um, or touching through pants or any of that sort of shit... Um, is awesome, but it's still a fantasy until you sit down and go, well, is there something here? Well, listen, do, we he something, do we actually need to well, he, discuss this? He let him feel his flimder through his pants. But that's not in the realm of fantasy. I mean, it's, it's a reality. It's that's happening. That's not a fantasy. No, 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 no. But, I mean, until you sit down and go, are we going to continue doing this? Or is this actually going to go somewhere? Or are we going to stop this? Oh, it's messy. I'm How long sure has he been is. married? It doesn't say he says I'm a married guy in my late in my late thirties and my dad in law is in his late fifties. So it doesn't say how long he's been married. But it says that over the past few years there's a tremendous amount of physical contact. Wow. Does he speak should he speak to no, his wife? No, 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 no. no, no. Oh god no. I'd go see a therapist before I did anything. Mostly because I mean now you're looking at a guy who's probably just look, I mean, he might not be gay, he might be bi curious, he might be um bisexual you know and he's just attracted he needs to figure out what it is he wants lucky and what where do you think to go. can i <sighs> oh, geez. i don't know but I'm stop what down. you're doing before and figure out where you're going with know. this before i want to ask a question about that i mean uh back in the day way back like uh, the folks worked it out and they they survived and and a lot of our parents have worked it out and they have they've stayed together for 50 60 oh, years but now wow. but now what i want to know is like the younger generation we can't keep it together we we 
what, what's the what's the thing with that? I think that? in the past, no. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. I think in the past, it's because people didn't have options. They didn't feel like they had, they felt like there was a fate. This is what you did. You got married, you settled down, you had kids, and that was it. Yeah. We have choices. We have options. We've got self help books. Go. We've got Oprah and Doctor Phil telling us we need to follow our inner goals and dreams <laughs> and shit like that. And that takes you on different routes. But there's also people are telling you go to a psychologist, a psychiatrist to help you work this out. Well, I would totally. I mean, what should he do? Talk to his wife? I know that's true, but maybe that's. I would stop what he's doing. Yeah. I mean, stop what you're doing. Before and stop touching your stop father-in-law's stop penis. Stop touching your father-in-law's <laughs> penis. I just felt that's maybe a little bit inappropriate. Oh. You stop cock that. tonsil. It's a bit of it's a it's a bit cock tonsilish. But yeah, go stop it. And go see a therapist. But yeah. I don't think that's really in the realm of norm. normal. That's I hate normal, normal yeah. but not really in the realm of does happens a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Very strange. All right. Uh, lucky, did you manage to find Doc? Thanks for bringing her here, buddy. Yes, I know, thank yes, God. Yes, I got to tell us. I was actually on my way to Krugersdorf yesterday. Uh, oh, uh, Krugersdorf, you, 30 kilometers away. No, I was go? meant to come here. Oh, no, then you were going the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. think. Big yeah. time. <laughs> you think? Yeah. Farmland. All right. <laughs> Dottie, it's always great to see you. Well, it's great to see you, but it's to always great to see chat me. to you. To did actually you actually, see did you see my boobs on the... I'm sure. Maz is in control of that. Maz? Oh, Maz is giving me that. You should just... You know? no, I, was, I had a button loose, actually. Well, <laughs> but then I just thought that was a little bit inappropriate for a proper show like but this. Yes, I'm trying to ask her was. the question and I said to her, why is she trying to hide? She's a good looking girl. So what's the what's You the said hiding? I'm not a swamp yeah, monkey. She's, she's what? Donkey? Swamp donkey. A she's swamp never heard donkey. the expression. You've the swamp never heard of about the swamp donkey? No. Not Everyone knows. If you look at a girl and she's a swamp donkey, she... Yeah. No, 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 no. Or at least there's like Dot, a swamp... Dot is a cracker. Yeah, she is. She's, she's a cracker. Yeah. I like a cracker ass or just a cracker? No, okay. one day, no. But it's all going to be revealed soon. <laughs> it yeah. is, yes. I made my, uh, my photography yesterday. As the name Dorothy Black. As, mm, I have people She's saying I need why? to come up. Why are you changing it? You told me in the car. No, 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 no. No, but there's like my actual name and then okay. there's the Dorothy Black thing. Okay. Yeah, so is and it coming out as your real name? I don't, I'm still thinking about but that. But you said there's a porn star named Dorothy Black. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not just being, take. Google it, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <Google> <laughs> it. Every now and then people like Google and they go like, oh my God, you're a porn star. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, listen. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Lucky, thanks for bringing uh, Dot. It's a pleasure. It's and pleasure. next week, I'm in your car with yes, you. Yes. We're next broadcasting. Week, myself, F1 Sash is going to be in there. So We're going to be banging us. it. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Oh, cool. uh, Dotty, you have a safe journey Goodbye. and enjoy the rest of Joburg. Ah, uh, yes, thank you. There we go. Dorothy Black, back with us next Wednesday, although it's going to be after 1.30 because we're doing the afternoon show next week. So uh, it'll be on uh, between 2 and 6. Six. We'll do it like 5.30. We'll get raunchy. Mm. We've got a very interesting uh, question next week, I think, about erectile dysfunction. The what? Oh. <laughs> yes, that should be a lot of fun. At the next intersection, turn on Gears with Sasha Martinengo. Weekdays from 12 to 2 p.m. Central African time.